All right, so welcome to another episode of Sports Extra. As usual, my name is Rubimbo Chakureka. This time around, joined by Ashley. And Ashley is going to be delving into a whole lot of stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us for the podcast. Great to be here. All right, so uh, Ash, today we've got quite a lot to be talking about. <laughs> we start off from the local scene, uh, Highlanders again in another uh, violent spat um, in the Chibuku Super Cup uh, quarterfinal against Zimbabwe. We're going to be talking about that. We're also going to delve into Dynamos losing out on 400k. That was $400,000 for the Cup Confederation Cup. And we're going to just look at uh, how that has uh, played out. But we've also got a lot to look at when it comes to cricket. Zimafro T10 yeah. Season 2 is here. Um, are we receiving it? Uh, do we understand it? Uh, well, we're going to be going into a whole lot of that. And obviously, for those of you that are uh, Premier League fans, Manchester City 2, Arsenal 2. Who would have thought about that one? I thought it was a Man City win. For sure. But anyway, it didn't come out as that. The Gunners. The Gunners are still st holding their own. Yeah. Despite yeah. everything that they, they've been through this season. Yeah, yeah. It's been a short season. It's only been about three, four games. Yeah. yeah. And they already holding on to two red cards for the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Yeah, well, let's see how that all goes. But in any case, you can also like, you can share, you can comment, you can subscribe to our platforms. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, as well as X formerly twitter i mean hey i don't know how long we're going to be saying that we're not going to adjust to that it's, it's going to be twitter for us but anyway yeah. just it is what it is yeah. so get in touch with us and of course um we would definitely uh, be able to respond uh, but we take a short break and when we come back we dive straight into it Okay, so Ash, let's get straight into it. We start off on the local scene and uh, Highlanders and Simbabora unable to finish off their contest oh. all because of a penalty decision. Right. Uh, that one is tricky. Yeah. You need to look at it from quite a number of angles. Yeah. Let's start off with uh, technology. Mm -hmm. If we had VAR in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. that's not a penalty. Yeah. On a yeah. good day, that's not a penalty. On any other day, Yes, the referee got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Then the power that Highlanders wields in the league. Mm -hmm. The way they reacted is wrong. The decision was wrong, but they ought to have continued playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, maybe they were running out of time because uh, it's 87th minute, 78th minute, they were out. Yeah. Yeah. They're calculating maybe there's no time. We consider this one. But looking at Highlanders, mm -hmm. they have the mm -hmm. best penalty saver in goal, Ariel mm -hmm. Any other day, you would have bet on Ariel saving a penalty. Yeah. They could have gone with Ariel, this is your moment to shine mm -hmm. and let's just play the game. And they opted for the exact wrong decision. <laughs> you know, that's that's the captain should have taken up and said, okay, let me guys, I'll carry the team on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he opted to order his team off the field. Don't know, maybe PSL needs to review their referees, the linesmen mm -hmm. and everything, but yeah. Bad decision on, on both ends. Ireland has made a bad decision walking off the field. Mm -hmm. Ref missed the, the the exact point of contact. Yeah. All right, fine. Uh, and you, you put out uh, something very interesting there. PSR, in terms of reviewing, we've heard, uh, I believe it's Norman Matemera, who's come out. He's the PSL, uh, you know, head of referees and so on. Uh, well, Zifa, head of referees, and yeah. he's uh, been talking about uh, referees' decisions need to be respected and things like that. For how long can either the PSL or any one of our domestic competitions actually survive without the use of VAR? We're not gonna let, we're not gonna survive. Mm. You know, our technology is moving. The game is moving ahead. Mm. Everything else is ahead of us, mm. and we are comfortable in. The age old decision, the ref's decision is final. Yeah, yeah. We've seen the rest of the world moving ahead and we're sitting back, relaxing and saying, We're good. <laughs> we're not good. Yeah. We might have the talent, we might have the best players in Zim mm. in Africa. At mm. some point, we've got decent players, mm. but we fail when it comes to catching up with the rest of the world. Mm. We're choosing to stay behind, not chase, not keep up, not chase the trend. We just want to sit there and say, We're good. 
we're not <laughs> we're definitely not. not well look uh ultimately uh, let's look at the chibuku super cup w w within its uh, entirety um manika diamonds again this time is uh, uh i believe it's third time lucky though yep. uh, against fc platinum uh, -huh. uh and uh, they've progressed uh all dependent what the decision will be uh, but there's a high likelihood that Simba Bora might actually receive the result uh -huh. uh, and move ahead. The Dynamos and Yad are still to play because we know Dynamos oh. was uh, on duty uh -huh. uh, and, and things like that. But um, what does this also uh, begin to show? Because this was a heavy hitter quarterfinal stage for the Chibuku Super Cup. Uh, are we seeing maybe the Giants coming back in uh, to the fold with Dynamos, Caps, and Highlanders, all of them being found in the quarterfinals of this uh, cup competition, or was it maybe just happenstance that they didn't necessarily have the toughest of fixtures going into the quarterfinal stage? I'd love to say it's a change of guard. Mm -hmm. Top of the league right now is Simbabwe. And uh, Ireland is somewhere at the bottom, number four. Mm. And Dynamos is a little bit lower than that. Mm. And Caps is way lower there. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking at change of guard. Last couple of, last few seasons, maybe five years mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. it's been Gezi Platinum and FC Platinum. Mm -hmm. So those are our big uh, boys at the moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe our imaging Man City-like mm -hmm. teams. Mm -hmm. We are missing the main crux of the, of, of, of the issue here. <laughs> what it means to Caps United... Dynamos and Highlanders. These are community clubs. Mm. Every cent counts. Mm. These are their money earners. Mm. Gezi Platinum, Simba Bora, FC Platinum, they have solid financial backing. Yeah. So this Chibuku Cup means a lot to these guys. Mm -hmm. means a whole lot more to the players, to the admin. Brings revenue. Mm -hmm. Much, much needed revenue. There is not much sponsorship out there. Mm -hmm. So they really need these games. And uh, looking at it, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's going to be tough to call back the superpowers. They are mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. Losing players to Simba Bora and uh, I think even uh, Highlanders has lost a few players to mm -hmm. some of these mm -hmm. upcoming clubs. Mm -hmm. There is no more value in being the oldest clubs on the league. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about the dollar. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means to them now. It's got to be them winning all the Super Cups, the league, mm -hmm. any other cup that comes up, they need the revenue. They mm -hmm. do not have uh, company owned backing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, look, I, 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 I tend to, to actually go with that point, um, especially in terms of how um, these new clubs have come. I mean, uh, you are actually very light in saying that they've lost them to some of the new clubs in the PSL. They've lost players to Division, Division 1. One players. You know, <laughs> teams, yeah. Yeah, you know, we know Scotland went mopping up. <laughs> uh, the Golden Eagles. Was, you know, Moes and all those yeah. uh, have done that. And out even in the Eastern region, uh, oh, you hear one as well. Greenfield as well. Greenfield as well. Greenfield as well. Greenfield as well. taking all the talent. Yeah. So it's interesting times indeed, and uh, it's a matter of time before our uh, darling oldest clubs uh, are going to find themselves in a quagmire. But uh, let's move now from the Chibugu Super Cup and go on to the continental region and talk about Dynamos. Uh, Dynamos unfortunately losing out to Orapa United in uh, Botswana, and it went down to penalties. Um, aggregate it ended 1-1. It was always very tricky for Dynamos to try and hold on to a solitary goal and progress like they did in the previous round. And I guess this time around, they found out the hard way. I'll put three things forward here. Mm. First of all, we have been out of Africa for... Due to boardroom squabbles, we've been out of Africa. Mm -hmm. It's cost us. Mm -hmm. The development, the climatization, people had to be familiar with playing at that level. Yeah. They lost that. Mm -hmm. Two... Uh, our league, these clubs, Dynamos has had squabble after squabble after squabble in the boardroom. Players not pitching up for training, players having their issues not resolved, mm. players walking away, all those coaches up, being fired, left, all, right, and center. All that builds up to the fact that when it matters most, when it matters most, you can't. You can't hold your own. Mm -hmm. They do not have the depth that they used to have. Mm -hmm. They do not have the same caliber of players. Mm -hmm. Given that an option, you'd see someone like uh, Kamat Billiard. Mm -hmm. Same as, remember the days when Alus Bunjira, Stratum Risa, when they came back? Mm -hmm. They went to those big, big clubs. They went to Highlanders, Dynamos. Now, you get uh, Yada taking the cream, mm -hmm. you know. So, you've got that big gap. Mm -hmm. Then lastly, you're walking into 
a game with a 1-0 lead mm -hmm. and you're choosing to hold back and try and play a defensive game. That was all wrong. Mm -hmm. Should have gone for the kill. Mm -hmm. They might not have the best of uh, teams, but when you can score one, surely you can, surely score, you can score another one. Mm -hmm. Make it comfortable, then sit back and defend. They chose mm -hmm. to from the kickoff to defend, yeah. to play a defensive game. That and also, well. you had uh, Kevin Moyer <laughs> missing a penalty as well. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that was unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Very unfortunate. Of which, look, penalties are always a gamble at the end of it all. But I think at the end of the day, it was just the fact that you've got a very slender lead. Uh, one nil. It's not something you can do. Yeah. To... And playing at the highest level, as we're saying, of African football, uh, Orapa United has now got more experience within the CAF Champions League uh, than Dynamos actually has. Um, and uh, they've been playing now at that highest level. I think we actually did hear Taurai Manguiro mm -hmm. uh, giving us a bit of background because he did coach Orapa United. Orapa United, United yes, yes. And uh, spoke about, you know, how they've uh, been organized, how they've been able to gel and and move forward. People have been building structures and organizations whilst we're sitting back and having our Zifa squabbles, Dynamos is squabbling. So you look at the level of squabbles that are pulling us back. All of them administrative, all of them pointless. We haven't gone past uh, the past five seasons without drama in in our big clubs. Mm -hmm. but when you get to to this point, you wonder, is it a blessing this guy that didn't get money? <laughs> <laughs> if they got him of one, oh, if they won the million at yeah. the end of the... <laughs> if you can imagine yeah. the scope was coming yeah. with all that. Yeah. We, we're really trying to look at it and say, maybe it could have been a blessing in this guy get, mm -hmm. get your house in order on other fronts, then come back and win. You mm -hmm. Come back with a cohesive team behind you, the administration, mm -hmm. the coaching department, and you build the team from there. If they had won, it would have been well, uh, feeding friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so before we seal this uh, particular one up and go for a break, um, how detrimental, and I think you spoke just a little bit about it, how detrimental has it been for Zimbabwean football not to be participating on continental levels? Because I do know at one particular time, um, FC Platinum won uh, the title, and they said, we're not going into the preliminary rounds because we don't have the money. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I believe uh, one of the other years as well, the Chibuku Super Cup was won. And we are not going to participate in the CAF Confederation Cup and things like that. Uh, how detrimental has that just been for us not to participate on in terms of continental football? Listen, let's be frank. You cannot compete at uh, elite level if you're not training and experiencing at elite level you can't just show up and be a miracle mm -hmm. you need to prepare for this we've lacked the depth that we needed mm -hmm. as, as as clubs we've lacked the depth that ne that's needed to go out there and compete we've uh seen good players we've had good players like uh of late we've got our uh, prince dube and them that are playing in as in, in tanzania mm -hmm. those teams are building structures where they can allow a decent player from Zimbabwe to come. Yeah. Yeah. When we go shopping, 90% yeah. of the time, we don't know the guys that we bring in from Cameroon, Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. All these guys, they're not exactly high-caliber high players. Yeah. Yeah. And they have no experience that they bring yeah. that will help us with, with, with the continental championship. We're not getting players that have played national team. Yeah. No. We're getting players that... Well, we see the coach says, hey, I like the way he plays. Mm. But they do not bring any depth. Mm -hmm. And part of it is because of our financial challenges. We've got financial challenges in clubs. Yes, we, we've got to acknowledge things are not going well for them. Mm -hmm. But they also need to build towards where does the money come from. We're not looking at what are we preparing for. We're just saying, okay, yeah, we're going there. And like you gave an example, FC Platinum saying we can't afford to go there. Mm -hmm. In Zim, they are one of the, at some point, they were the best, well-funded clubs. They have a lovely stadium and all. Yeah. And when you get to the point where you say, we can't afford to go there, you're looking at the pros and cons. Okay. Are we going there to have fun or are we going there to make money? When you're playing in the league, when you're playing Confederation, CAF, mm -hmm. Confederations Cup, it's not about entertainment, it's about innings. Okay. This is professional to them. This is their bread and butter. So they really need to look at it that way and say, is it worth it? This was a golden opportunity for, for, for Dynamos to improve their coffers. And yeah, big point, big chance missed. 
could have showed up their coffers, but I always doubt that would have gone that way. There was <laughs> always going to be a squabble coming up from that money. <laughs> So it could be blazing in these guys, like I said before. <laughs> could be, could be. But in any case, uh, these are our thoughts. We'd love to hear yours as well. Make sure that you get into the comment section and let us know what your thoughts are concerning this one. Did Dynamos miss out on a big opportunity? Or maybe it was just they were not good enough for the level that they reached. Well, we're going to take a short break. And when we do come back, we're going to be talking about Zim Afro T10. And also looking at the fact that the Springboks, well... They started in Argentina. Is it the signs of the times? All this and so much more right after the break. All right, so welcome back uh, to Sports Extra. I mean, we're having a ball of a time here with uh, Ashley and just, uh, you know, breaking down some points. And immediately we dive into the crickets. Zim Afro T10, it's come back uh, to our shores. Some big names that are yeah. part of this. Uh, David Warner, the former Australian, Australian shot, yeah. I mean, legend, legend. Uh -huh. uh, Rassi van der Dusen is in there. Some of those are the James Nishams are from New, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah. They're all a part of this and they've come to dawn um you know all the various uh, franchise jerseys of course different names are from the first season that we had uh but um obviously we've now got some different names like harare bolts now um i the last time we had uh, the blauio braves yeah and now they're the blauio jaguars and so <laughs> on which is all good, good yeah. but um Maybe actually, let's let's dig down a little bit further into it. Uh, a great, uh, fantastic initiative. Obviously, this means more cricket for some of our local cricketers. Also, brushing shoulders with international cricket mm -hmm. players. But uh, do you feel that the whole concept of T10 is uh, something that we have received, that we have uh, uh, embraced? I think the crowds have been much better than they were uh, the very first time that this mm -hmm. tournament came through. Okay, the good and the bad of it is we are having this at uh at a good time mm -hmm. it's nice and warm in zim right now mm -hmm. evenings are vi very nice and warm you don't need to wear a jersey you can go out and have fun mm -hmm. we bring in the big players mm -hmm. we need to advertise these players mm -hmm. we need the masses to want to meet them mm -hmm. we need the people to want to say okay i'm going to i'm going to watch rasi yeah we're not seeing that i'd rather we we, we publicize this thing not as an elite sport. Mm -hmm. Let's send it back to the grassroots where it was. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it feels like an elite sport, you know, or maybe an excuse for mm -hmm. for the Madara. She says, hey, I'm, I'm at cricket when, you know, mm -hmm. when you just want to go home. Mm -hmm. But kudos to local uh, national broadcaster putting it out there. Mm -hmm. They're showing the games live, mm -hmm. which brings it a little bit closer to the people. Mm -hmm. But we've, we also have to balance it with our own local challenges. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have electricity time. They, they yeah, have to watch yeah, that game. Yeah. So the grassroots are missing out on that. Those are the people we need to support the game. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that give us the numbers that we need, the viewership that we need. Mm -hmm. We're not getting that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the big names are there, but the people are not seeing them. The people are not hearing them because of other outside challenges. We've got, to, we've got to be creative. We've got to find a creative way of putting it out there. I'll suggest... Maybe a fan pack at Takashinga, mm -hmm. maybe a fan pack in Mabuku, maybe a fan pack at Stoddard. Put up a screen, it's cheaper, brings in the crowd, they get to watch. If we can't, well, maybe let's say publicize buses to the games. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they're free. Mm -hmm. Free entry. Let's, uh, let's publicize buses to the games and back to the, to the masses. People mm -hmm. will spend time there, do whatever they have to do. Let's put it out there, let's get mm -hmm. the people coming. Yeah. We need the viewers to sit on those on those benches and say, "We're watching cricket." It, if you've been in a, on on a field with a big crowd, you know how it feels. Yeah, yeah. As compared to having ten people just saying, "Yay!" You know, most of the people that will go at that time would be people that sit in the keg in the mm -hmm. Centurion mm -hmm. bar. They usually don't eat the rest. You yeah. really need the players to feel the energy coming from the, from the stands. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we really need that. We need to have a creative way of working within our environment. We don't have to endure. Let's be resilient. Let's come mm -hmm. up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Which way do we go? Okay. Extra cost of bringing people from Mavuko, Hetcliffe. Bring them to watch the game. Let them watch the game. Let them get, get, get used to seeing T10. These shorter formats are designed to be exciting. Yeah. They're designed to entertain the crowd. 
unlike uh, what we the diet we grew up on yeah, yeah. watching uh, test cricket <laughs> <laughs> see we try to bring the crowd to guys come watch cricket it's going to be six or sticks if he misses it he's out if he yeah, gets it yeah. it's coming straight to him yeah and the fields are designed just for that nowadays but no, come on no. all right fine ash look mm. test cricket is the best yeah. cricket that's me <laughs> <laughs> i give you so yeah. yeah but in any case but in any case i i i i, I hear you I, I hear your point and and i think maybe it is a an idea in the pipeline maybe of course it doesn't come all the way down because what i do I have an understanding of is that uh, Zimbabwe cricket isn't totally involved in the way that it's done because it comes through uh, T10 Sports Global mm -hmm. and and they come with their whole machinery. So maybe they're still trying to understand the Zimbabwean landscape. Maybe a bit more consultation with Zimbabwe cricket would also help because I think uh, we've seen what Zimbabwe cricket has been able to achieve, uh -huh. particularly at national team level, the vibe around it. We're all able to come through when India came, jam packed a stadium, packed stadium you yeah. know and things like that maybe another idea would be why not take a t10 to takashinga but maybe capacity might be an issue but um you know all those kinds of ideas that you were talking about i think it's something that would be key yeah like i said if you can't uh <laughs> take them there then bring them, bring them here. <laughs> you know yeah, somebody's gonna do it's gonna be there's gonna be some movement there's gonna be ex an exchange yeah mm -hmm. bring the people it might cost you a bit if you're going to take them to Takashinga, then improve the stadium. Yeah, and it's then, gonna, yeah. there's going to be a, 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 a cost pay of somewhere along the way, but you cannot have a great game of T10 being played with no audience. Absolutely, I I totally agree with you, and of course we are going to be uh, seeing it as it develops. By the time we get to the end of this week, uh, that's when the final will be played on the twenty eighth of uh, September, twenty eighth, twenty ninth mm -hmm. uh, of September. That's when they will be playing the final. So it's just jam packed, exhilarating uh, action. Make sure that you go down to our area sports club, go and enjoy, go and see some of the big uh, name cricket players that you would only see on TV, but now this time round. They are live and direct, and they are playing the kind of cricket that we all love to watch. But now let's move on quickly and uh, look at what uh, <laughs> what happened in, in terms in terms of rugby. So uh, we're going to start off locally, and we're going to breeze past that. We're going to spend more time, obviously, on Springboks Argentina. Uh, but locally, in terms of sevens action, uh, Pitbulls and FS Raiders uh, won uh, the Paramount Garments uh, sevens uh, tournament played out at Old Georgian. Um, any surprises for you? I know he's a he's a former Red Lion. He's very touched <laughs> by that. Uh, Red Lion being a Sports, Sports Club, Club. You know, uh, yeah. thirty-three twenty-eight win for Pitbulls. A testament to some of the work that is being done by Jeff Madake with uh, many of the youngsters that have come through the Churchill ranks and are now uh, part of this uh, Pitbull side. Pitbulls is growing stronger and stronger year by year. Okay, there is. Uh, let's be objective about uh, Pitbulls. Mm -hmm. Pitbulls has an awesome pool of players. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate part is, for me, mm -hmm. we've missed the point of Churchill. Mm -hmm. Churchill is no longer playing in the schools league. Mm -hmm. We now they're now surviving on Pitbulls. That's my own opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are now playing more as Pitbulls, and mm -hmm. even on the local circuit, school circuit. They play a spot of games. I don't think mm -hmm. they play more than 10 games in a yeah, season, yeah. which is kind of odd. Mm -hmm. And for such a large rugby, a rugby the sport. culture that comes with Churchill rugby, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be where it is right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Pitbulls is doing well. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's sucking the life out of Churchill mm -hmm. and focusing on that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. They have a good brand, yes. Are they keeping the school alive? Mm -hmm. No. That's a different topic. Yeah. Then beating sports club, well, Pitbulls is sports club life, you know what? <laughs> it's all LT, all of them are four yeah. former sports club players, and uh, Madak at some point was part of the technical team yeah. at sports club. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They know who they're playing against. And anyway, sports club is predominantly mm -hmm. Churchill boys. <laughs> former Churchill boys. So yeah, they know each other. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a good game. And for me, surprisingly, them playing a, a final with the Red Lions, mm -hmm is a testament okay they've done better because you'd expect ogs ogs as a bulk of quite a number of guys in the seven setup mm -hmm. maybe you can forgive them because they're in keta mm -hmm. but you need the depth you need to show depth all the islands has disappeared from the circuit mm -hmm. with uh with the large number of sables players that they have mm -hmm. 
I don't know if they're saving themselves for sables, but I believe we ought to have seen them putting their hand up and saying, listen, we're playing rugby. Mm -hmm. This is just local rugby. It's not mm -hmm. something that uh, they ought to avoid. Mm -hmm. No, let's promote the 15s, let's promote 7s. Mm -hmm. If we shy away from 7s and reserve our place for mm -hmm. 15s, we need to have a serious second, 7s and 15s mm -hmm. second. We don't have that. We have the mm -hmm. same players doing the same. Mm. I would have loved to have them playing as well. Mm -hmm. You know, putting up their hands and saying, listen, yes, we we won the 15s league, but we're good. Yeah, we, 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 we got good. it. Mm. You know, some of the rugby that we're seeing out there is, well, it's it, it, it's lacking something. I'm not sure what, I'm not a coach, but mm. I, I can feel that it's it's lacking. Pitbulls is not, ca cannot be dominant, that dominant. They made it to the 15 semifinals. And they've won the the, the Paramount Garments uh, Sevens Tournament. Next week, they're the headline team at the Zambezi Challenge. You, you you get the picture that the other teams are falling off somewhere along the way. So it's Checho that's producing the all extraordinary players. We've missed the grassroots, where the small guys came from. Yombare guys, where the Manasseh Sitters came from. Your Victor Zambaos, all those guys played sevens, played fifteens. They came from there. We miss the little places where your fortune Pendo Moses Isa came from. Mm -hmm. Mabuku. Mm -hmm. they, they're no longer playing rugby. Mm -hmm. We need to get them back and showing up the other teams. The other teams need to get. We can't all be looking at Churchill and Pete yeah. players. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a testament to rugby. Mm -hmm. If they produce their players and hold on to them, what's going on with the rest of the clubs? What are they doing? Well, a lot of work uh, definitely has to be done in that particular regard. And, and we are also thankful for the fact that um, uh, Sable's head coach, that's Pete Bernardi, went out and said, Churchill, thank you for your contribution uh, to Zimbabwean rugby. Yeah, I mean, that was a big, that was that was a big, big, yeah. big. And, um, uh, you know, being part of that and going through the corridors, oh, my mm. gosh. <laughs> All of those <laughs> memories of, yeah. you know, came flooding back yeah. and, and things like that. But definitely uh, something that needs to be done. I believe he is going to be going mm. uh, to Prince Edward as well because they've also made a significant contribution, contribution yes. um, uh, towards uh, the way that um, a rugby has been shaped. Let me say that. Can I, can I just say something why don't why don't we take it out to those that do not contribute and so mm. you can contribute to this yeah let's make yeah. it our, our battle let's yeah. all come together and say you can bring something and this is our thing. for example i've got a I've, I've got a couple of guys that on the sable squad that mm. uh there is uh dave makanda from mm. makamba from st john's Chicago. yeah they will never believe that he's stable. You should go there. Yeah. There is uh Hilton Commander, Commander mm -hmm. Jax mm -hmm. from Mfakosi too high. Yeah. Take it there and say, yeah, we've got Jax on the on the on the books. Yeah, he came from you. So if you can find one, how many more are not yeah. getting the opportunity? So let's show them that they can do it. Yeah. I hope it's not only Churchill P and yeah. the big boys. No, let's take that out there. Yeah, I definitely believe that that should be the case, and hopefully that will be pursued. Now let's go on to uh yeah <laughs> this one was a stunner for for quite a number of course so first and foremost if we just look at all of the rugby championship results um new zealand uh, by the skin of their teeth yeah. uh <laughs> survived uh, a wallabies onslaught uh but they came out 31 28 winners and then it was the springboks who got stunned many thought that springboks were going to wrap it all up uh in terms of winning the rugby the championship, rugby championship you know? yeah. uh but they lost out 29 28 uh very close win uh but either way it is argentina now let's focus on argentina my oh my what a journey it has <laughs> been over the last give or take six to seven years uh their journey has been really really good and now here they are the beaten the world champions and many others are okay. saying let's this focus on the rugby championship. Rugby the rugby championship. Yeah. They've beaten New Zealand. Yep. They have beaten Australia. Australia yeah. They've beaten South Africa. What more would you ask of them? <laughs> They've yeah. beaten all the three teams that they never used to beat in the last few years. Mm -hmm. So basically, looking at it, my worst fear is about to be yes. <laughs> My worst fear is that they might just go on and win it. No, yeah. they, they might not go. Yeah. You see, I've looked at all their games. This mm. this rugby championship mm. 2024. Mm. 
They beat Australia. Yeah. Lost horribly the second game. Yeah. They beat New Zealand. Yeah. Lost horribly yeah. the second game. Yeah. They beat South Africa. <laughs> this is my <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking at this. Okay, there's a big defeat coming. Yeah, That's yeah. the trend I'm reading in there. Yeah. Okay, they win one, then they lose dismally. Like the two different teams playing. Uh, oh, maybe is it uh, you would have put absolutely everything into this one one and then most probably you just don't have anything left in the tank for the second one i wouldn't say so they have won first game they've lost second oh if they win the first game yeah. like they did with the yeah. all blacks they lose the second game mm. they win they won the first game with australia mm. they lost the second one mm -hmm. It's not making sense to me how you go up there, then you yeah. come down and you lose 67 10 to, mm. to Australia that you won up the previous day. Mm, 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 mm. And the previous weekend, you win by such a massive margin, they beat them 67. Yeah, yeah. When you come back and the numbers are on you again, yeah. you're wondering, okay, so what happened? Why didn't you just do what you did right? Mm -hmm. Seems like you went and figured out what, what they did wrong and just started yeah. playing that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You, you repeated everything they did wrong, mm. and it's interesting that uh, the leadership circle at, um, for the Pumas mm -hmm. has remained consistent. It's always been uh, Crevy, Pablo Mateo. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that he's retired, I, can, I believe he's a, he's a leader within the, within the squad. Crevy, Pablo Matera, Lavanini, mm -hmm. the guys are doing the work. But they're not telling the guys, guys, it's not done. Yeah, we, we still have another game. Yeah, we have we still to have another game. Let's finish them off. Yeah, all those guys were there for the for the whooping. Like mm. Australia, Australia is not playing their best rugby right now, despite the fact that they they managed to pick they up. made the All Blacks work mm -hmm. for for this victory. Mm -hmm. Seems uh, we're not looking at who's playing rugby anymore. We're just going onto the field yeah. and not strategizing mm -hmm. how do you do the only team that has had back-to-back -back victories has been south africa mm -hmm. beating australia mm -hmm. beating new zealand then this time i don't know maybe it's the tinkering a little bit yeah because look he's been tinkering every single game um he's not had a consistent starting 15 throughout the rugby championship it's either he changes the fly off he changes this he moves uh, uh you know cheslin colby into second center he, he does something uh you know uh, some experimentation uh which is fair and fine that's rassi rasmus for you he's the mind games man well, with, with 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 a with a line with a try from the line out by cheslin yeah <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't wonder okay it's weird it's interesting you know yeah. like, it would then if it doesn't work you're like okay do we blame the player yes, the coach? The coach. where do we go where do we go with that yeah. with that with that is it is it the coach's idea or the leadership on the field is saying oh guys let's be creative hey yeah. we, let's just do something and the confidence to have your wing throwing a line out <laughs> then going back to his position <laughs> if he lost the line out it was going to be a kick for touch. Yeah, yeah. And you're not be <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff. But it works. On yeah. a good day, it works. And he mm. gets away with it. Yeah. Then yeah. on, uh, uh, well, this time it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, many are blaming Manny Lebok for, for it, um, having maybe a horrible game um, in terms of kicking, in terms of kicking for posts uh -huh. and things like that. Uh, but... Uh, is there not also a general feeling that maybe the Springboks are running on their last legs right now? Because if we look at that star-studded lineup, which went and won uh, the World Cup in Tokyo and then repeated the feat uh, in France, in, in France mm -hmm. uh, most of these guys have now hit their 30s and some of them are going into their mid-30s now. Mm -hmm. And that it's very unlikely that they will be proceeding to the to next, the next world, world. So maybe now it's for um, uh, Rassi Erasmus to start blending in uh, some of the guys that he's now looking towards for the 2027 exactly. World okay. Cup. Okay. Do you think that they might be in the same stead as the Sia Colises, the Malcolm Marxes, the Dwayne Vermeulens, the Faf de Klerks, Andre Pollards, the Willie LaRue's? I mean, we can go on mm -hmm. uh, in terms of this list. Are they in the same class and caliber, or do you think that this might be the time that the the box might just start tapering off? I'm conflicted about that. First of all, I'm an All Blacks fan, mm -hmm. so looking at the game, uh, this same squad beat Australia, mm -hmm. so there's nothing much to debate about. If you're saying they are 
their their bad squad or anything. Mm -hmm. They beat Australia. Mm -hmm. They also use bulk of that squad against New Zealand, and they won. And they won. So yes, he's doing whatever he's doing. It's uh, post World Cup. World Cup was twenty twenty three. They have this whole year to think of the next World Cup. Yes, their players are tapering off in their 30s. Mm -hmm. But they've won four games on the trot. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't come into play. Yeah. <clears throat> Experience, age is not coming into play. Because they've won four games on the trot. Mm -hmm. but this one game went sideways mm -hmm. for some reason. Mm -hmm. I would uh, wouldn't want, for, for lack of a better idea... Mm -hmm. I would lay it all on the on Salman Murat. He's the captain mm -hmm. on the day. You have a 17-point lead. How do we secure our 17-point lead? What do we do right? How do we defend? Mm -hmm. They tried their blitz defense. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Argentina found a way around it. The the quick uh, the quick mm -hmm. passes mm -hmm. found the way on the on the edges. Found their gaps on on the outside as they were rushing. Mm -hmm. So you really can say, uh, unfortunately. Oh yeah, before I go, before I go on, leave Manny Liboka alone. Mm. He played with fourteen other guys who did not defend, who did not score other tries after that. He was yes, he missed he missed a penalty when it mattered most. Mm -hmm. But the fifteen of them before he came on board with Henry Pollard on the field, they let go of a seventeen point lead. You do not let go of seventeen points and then go to the halftime with with. The, they were and down expect to win yeah. and expect to come back and say okay uh money libok is going to rescue us if we get a penalty what if that penalty didn't come they lost the game because 15 guys didn't play you play as a team you win as a team you lose as a team and right now unfortunately only money libok is suffering from the media backlash mm -hmm. it actually should rest on rassi's head right now mm -hmm. rassi put the captain on the field captain played he played a good game. Salman Murat actually played a good game. Captain should have led. The senior players on the field, Chesley, Andre Pollard, all those guys should have said, okay, we've considered, we're seeing how they're beating us. Let's adjust. None of them went to him and said, let's, let's adjust our back line. We, let's do something, let's different. Do something different. Let's yeah. defend different. Let's, they played according to how they trained, which is what they were taught by Rassi over the week. So it comes down to, for me, it comes down to that. You let go of a 17-point lead. You went into the in, into the break under pressure from Argentina. It was never about that one penalty. There was more to it. There was more to it. Oh, definitely there was more to it. I know that there are some box fans that will have their say. Uh, look, we are both All Blacks fans. I mean, we'll stay that way as, as long as it remains. Uh, but I think for the Springboks, a couple of lessons that they need to learn. And, well, there is a likelihood that they're going to seal this thing uh, when it does come <laughs> home. And uh, they play against Argentina, Argentina uh, in front of that, uh, you know, massive crowd on home turf. But anyway, let's see how that one goes. We're going to take a short break. When we do come back, we take our European football review. All right, so for all of you football lovers, in particular those that love the Premier League, we do have a fantasy football league. Make sure that you go onto our Facebook page. Uh, you will be able to find the link and the code for you to join. I think we've got uh, almost 400, 500 people that are uh, on that. So it's going to be tough for you to try and win that one uh, or to try and uh, come out on tops in terms of that particular fantasy league. But uh, join in. Let's join in the fun. Let's see if you can actually get some points going. The big uh, focus is obviously on the match that happened on the weekend where all eyes were on the defending champions the title contenders and they just could not be separated to all draw in the end but how painful first and foremost would that draw have been uh, to Mikel Arteta considering that for over 35 minutes you held on you held on <laughs> and and somehow some way they found a way through john stones of all people just score the call uh to be frank with you uh i like the way arsenal plays yeah for a lack of a better word arsenal is the team that plays uh sexy football in england mm. other, other yeah. guys play the english uh, yeah. brand yeah. and 
also Arsenal is first becoming a Manchester City light. Mm -hmm. There's everybody that leaves City still got uh, maybe a few a few ounces on the battery mm -hmm. is going to Arsenal. They took Ryan Sterling. I think was mainly for his uh, Man City uh, exposure and experience. Brought him over. Not sure, sure how they're going to use him on this one. But looking at it, yes, they defended for a good 35 minutes and they showed the, what they're made of. Mm -hmm. The goals of late oddly coming from Gabriel. <laughs> <The defender. laughs> yeah. He's been the savior of late. Yeah. And uh, David Raya. Mm. Outstanding performance, uh, phenomenal, whole, yeah. phenomenal goalkeeper. He's been yeah. outstanding the whole, the whole, the whole time. Mm. This was the beginning of this. Actually, the, the past season and yeah. this one, he's been outstanding. Then you need to look at uh, Arsenal's midfield. Mm. Thomas Partey has come in and yeah, become a, up, yeah. a, a stalwart in the middle, in the middle of the park. Mm. Declan Rice is missing, and you've got Jorginho with experience. They're doing whatever they can. Mm. To, to, to stabilize, but yeah, Thomas Party has, has, has come back mm. that old Thomas that we, yeah, we, yeah. we, we used oh, to see, oh. except maybe on the offensive side, he's, mm. he's kind of tapered it off a bit, mm. but defensively, he's doing a, st a stellar job. Then City, for all intents and purposes, <laughs> should have scored six or seven more goals. <laughs> <laughs> Easily, yeah. Easily. Yeah. But yeah, David Ryan stood, stood mm. his ground, defended his, his, his goal line mm. so well. I'm also debating if Trossard hadn't gotten the card, maybe it would have gone sideways. You know, they had a, they had a defensive mentality leading 2-1, you know, a man down there, okay, let's just let's just defend our, our slender lead. Mm -hmm. So maybe if they had uh, Trossard on the field, they just said, okay, let's keep attacking. Yeah, let's they might have considered, mm -hmm. looking at the chances that City got, mm -hmm. they might have considered something, mm -hmm. you know, one or two more goals. But yeah, maybe yeah, maybe sending off of trust wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> it got them defending. Yeah, but, but okay, for for me, when I when I look at that particular game, for me, I, I think the chinks within the armor of Pep Guardiola also do tend to come out. Um, against, um, well, I wouldn't say against a more resolute defense because I think Arsenal defended phenomenally well. I mean. For large parts of that time, especially when it got to round about 74, so yeah. I was like, City are not going to score. They just couldn't mm. find a way uh, through. Uh, but I, I feel holding on to the ball, and at the end of it all, the statistics were the number of completed passes in the entire game were just about four to five times more uh, than what Arsenal had. Arsenal had 148 passes mm -hmm. entirely, completed passes. City had 619 completed passes at the end of it all. Yeah. Um, to, to a certain extent, that's when you feel that uh, tactics like long-range strikes would have been something that could try and shift the defense. It would try and pull uh, maybe an Arsenal defender in front of the other. Then you create those gaps that you can pass in between. But I have a feeling that as well with Man City, sometimes they tiki-taka a bit too much to the point whereby... It becomes a bit desperate. To be honest, the way that that goal went in is un Manchester City like. Short it corner. Was a, it was a desperate goal. Yeah, it was a desperate goal. You know, <laughs> it was un Manchester City like. Uh, short corner, Jack Grealish uh, passes off, uh, long shot, uh, deflection, deflection, yeah. and then, uh, you know, bundled in, you know? So. In basic, Sean, I would call that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that yeah. Somehow it happened. Well, that's yeah. a lack of the draw. Hey, it happens in the game. Mm. The ball bounces around, lands at John Stone's feet. He puts it. He puts it in the roof of the net. Mm. Unlikely scorer, but like you said, the mentality of Tiki Taka. Mm. Actually, both teams play the same kind mm. of game, so they are competing on mm. on certain levels, playing the similar similar football. They know, they know how to shut each other down. Mm. So you maintain having a one man advantage means you can pass the ball to someone who's somewhat free. Mm -hmm. So yes, the passes did come, but they were mainly in the middle and in mm -hmm. sending the ball back because mm -hmm. they couldn't find a way around the party and uh, and the defense. Yeah. Saliba, G Gabriel, they did a, a, a stellar job mm -hmm. in the in the middle of the park. They kept playing their game. Mm -hmm. Another another pro for Guardiola. They played their game. They maintained composure, stayed calm. It's gonna come, and eventually did come. So yeah, maybe the passes were just Pep telling his guys, "Listen, we know this is gonna happen. 
-hmm. just a matter of time. So let's stick to our game plan. plan let's and we keep play, going. play our game. Let's mm -hmm. not be under pressure. We don't do. We generally don't do long range shots. Mm -hmm. It will come the way we we bring them every other every other weekend. Yeah, most definitely. Now we're gonna quickly focus on Chelsea before we shut it down. Chelsea, a very interesting side uh, this season. You know, off the field, many may believe are chaotic. They are just buying everyone. I mean, even Ashley, you might just be up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can keep your yeah, 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 Chelsea will buy you. Know, you. Chelsea will buy you. Yeah. But uh, somehow, some way, Enzo Maresca. Um, and personally, I felt, how do you go and get a championship? winning coach find mm -hmm. championship title winning coach mm -hmm. with leicester city bring him to your side mm -hmm. with all intents and purposes of making champions league next year at the bare minimum uh -huh. which is a top four finish uh, -huh. uh or even contesting for the title because when everybody starts everybody wants to win the title so for all intents and purposes somehow some way he's made them into a machine and uh chelsea are scoring goals for fun they are winning well. Uh, they're actually playing some really good football. And at the same time, they've got tons of resources on the bench to be able to send on if need be. They have massive depth and quality on the on the field and on the bench. And way, way beyond the bench. <laughs> There's so much depth mm -hmm. all, all the way to, I don't know, to wherever they, 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 they go. For me, the, the, the interesting thing for Maeska is... He somehow found a way of getting Nicholas Jackson to score. Oh, <laughs> Nicholas Jackson had a that's the biggest terrible, goal. <laughs> terrible season last season when mm. he came to Chelsea. No, yeah, he's getting doubles. Yeah, he's scoring here. Mm. And you're now looking at it. Okay, where was this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, what in the last uh, five games, he's got around about four goals yeah, and he's got a couple goals. of assists yeah. uh, and everything like that. What, what do you think was the key to to unlocking Nicholas Jackson? Is it play your game, son, or is this better structure from Maresca as compared to Pochettino that has now allowed uh, Jackson to really, really get into his stride? I think it's a, it's a better structure from Maresca. Mm -hmm. Their game has changed. Uh, under Poch, they used to play with the midfield a lot. Mm -hmm. The midfield would come and press the 18-yard the area, the opposition 18-yard area. Right now, it's uh, Madueke and then uh, Jackson mm -hmm. being allowed to get the ball a little bit outside the box, push it forward, make a decision. Mm -hmm. I think last season, he only had, he had so many tapping opportunities or, you know, very slim opportunities that he would miss. Now he's, he gets to compose himself, pick a sport, like the goals when he scored a brace. Mm -hmm. The goals, you could tell, okay, he's looking at what am I doing? He's yeah. thinking, okay, yeah. I can do this. That time he just said, okay, let me, I just have to get to what, what like whatever. Whatever. Yeah. He had to assume, okay, uh, midfield is going to put the ball there, so I have to get there. Mm. He's not prepared for the kind of ball he gets. Right mm. now, he's getting the ball at his feet, gets a, a touch or two, mm. then he finishes. Mm. So I think it's it's been that change. Mm -hmm. It's been that change. And then they have changed somewhat their defense. Yeah. Their defense has come alive. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not uh, trying to hold on to the ball. They're it pushing it. Yeah, they're putting it. it into the wings, and it goes forward. Yes. And they've worked it out. So I think it's uh, Maresca who's doing something different from, from Poch. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see whether he will be able to, to succeed even further. I think on the 19th of October is one of his biggest tests. He'll be taking on Liverpool. Uh, 19th, 20th of October, rather. Okay. He'll be taking on uh, Arne Slot's uh, Liverpool, which was also quite imperious, winning by three goals to nil. I think Slot has just had the easiest start to the season. The only thing that he didn't have was well maybe playing a manchester united which of course he ran over so i would feel <laughs> like he had arguably the easiest start of the season but let's see as the fixtures are yeah, the, EP, the epo is no easy game too. yeah liverpool lost to bournemouth right yeah, 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 yeah to to nottingham forest nottingham forest yeah, yeah. Mm. so when you lose to nottingham forest <laughs> it's now the coach's job guys we need to change our mentality yeah you yeah. can't be losing to and we need the next game has to be yeah. a statement. They came next game, they made a statement. Unfortunately for me, if you watch the Liverpool uh, game, mm -hmm. they played the first half. They scored their three goals in the first half. Then they're done. They they're out. done. They, I don't know if they didn't want, they wanted to defend it, their three goal lead, but it was pretty much the same team on the field. 
not doing anything anymore uh, well uh, some of the strategy that i'm hearing around Anne slot as well as enzo mareska mm. is uh rotation and preservation of players because of the long season that is yeah. there ahead i mean games are now much more if you're in champions league you're now playing two more games, games than you initially would play in a group stage then you've got a round of 16 and so on and then you've got a carabao cup you've got an fa, FA cup, cup you've got the nations league, league and all and these everything things is happening there. all at once and they're you know, trying to manage their players yeah so now they're like get the results in the first half let's chill in the next um like even you saw with it, chelsea you do realize that at the end of the season <laughs> The goals we yeah, the goals we yeah, have we'll count. The day yeah. the <laughs> we'll count. I mean, yeah. even look at the way that Chelsea played. To be honest, Chelsea buried the three chances that they had mm. going forward. They really didn't dominate West Ham uh, mm. extraordinarily yeah. in any case. West Ham actually had its own couple of chances, which they, of course, were unable to finish off. So I, I guess that's the issue of rotation. I think we also saw Eric Ten Hag doing the same with Marcus Rashford, mm -hmm. uh, trying to preserve him and, and see how the season goes. Because Marcus Rashford has also started quite brightly as well. But anyway, let's see how all of that goes. So my, my, my dark horse of the last couple of seasons mm -hmm. is Aston Villa. Oh, Una yeah, Emery is well. doing an exceptional job with Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. They are very quiet mm -hmm. and they're actually in the Champions League. Oh, yeah, they did. They did. They did. They won the, the game. Mm -hmm. And you really look at it as, okay, what exactly has he done different that he didn't do at us? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that was different than what he did at us is he got time. <laughs> he got time. I think if Arsenal had given him the time, because there were some certain things he was uncomfortable with at Arsenal, which they've decided to be slightly loose with Mikel Arteta, which they weren't loose with Unai Emery at the time. And so I yeah, feel I, that I, I, uh, I they've think done so. The two teams that suffer from for lack of a better word they suffer from legacy mm. arsenal and manchester united oh yeah the legacy of us and wenger and the legacy of uh Alex 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 Vegas, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. they haunt the coaches oh, <laughs> oh, yes, oh, of course you'll be told you know back in the day hey, this is this is ah. our part of our identity you're trying to infuse your fresh ideas your fresh culture okay guys let's do this because i want to achieve this mm. you have that backlash of you know what in the days of venga in the days of Vegas, mm -hmm. and we did, uh, this is a culture. you're trying to say culture is dynamic i'm here i'm trying to get these players to think this way the most important thing is you want trophies right mm -hmm. <laughs> after all you want the win you want the trophies allow me to do it in my way to get the trophies done and done. to get the results you know so let me do my work then wait for the result not tell me how to do my, my work. work then expect the result and then if it doesn't come it's on me ah tough times for coaches yeah. but anyway that brings us to the end of sports extra today has been an absolute joy uh, riding along with you make sure that you like you share you subscribe you comment uh get in the comment box uh, we've received a couple of comments on your feedback and of course we're trying to make sure that we add all those things and infuse those things onto the show yes we heard add one more analyst so that you have three <laughs> we're gonna add yeah. that we're gonna <laughs> add one believe me it's gonna be a nice good debate but we then don't want it to be too long but in any case what you have required and what you have desired we're going to try and do but that brings us to the end ash thank you so much for for joining me Pleasure today being here all right and uh of course to you our wonderful fans and uh those that are before we go in. before we go can we also get your predictions on the Springboks Argentina game. Oh, yeah, yeah, love yeah, to see yeah. what you think. We'd love to see what you expect to see yeah. on Saturday when the Springboks yeah. take on Argentina in Bombela. This is what I will say. Springboks are going to win. <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure it's going to be a heavy defeat to the Argentinians, but I believe uh, the Springboks. Yeah, the, the, the title is, is on the line. If yeah, Argentina yeah. wins, win, they've gone with it's it. It's their first year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see how that one goes. But anyway, thank you so much. And until next week. Cheerio.